Open Interpreter is an incredible open source project that I reviewed a few months ago, and essentially it is just like ChatGPT's code interpreter, but you can run it locally from your computer. And the best part is you can now power it completely locally with open source models. And since the last time I reviewed it, the team behind it has made incredible progress. It can now fully control your computer. They've made it super developer friendly so you can actually build applications on top of it. And it now has vision. So I'm gonna show you how to install it. I'm gonna talk about all of the new features and then I'm gonna show you a bunch of examples. So installing it now really could not not be easier. The first thing we're going to do is spin up a new conda environment. And to do that, we're going to type conda create dash n oi python equals 3.11. Now I already have an environment called oi, so it's going to ask me to replace that, but you shouldn't get that warning. So here it is, remove existing environment. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Then I'm going to say proceed, install everything. Then we copy this code right here, paste conda activate oi. And then we can tell it's activated because it says so right there. Now watch how easy it is to install open interpreter now pip install open dash interpreter and just hit enter that's it it installs everything we need and i have not run into any issues so it's done then to run it simply type interpreter and then hit enter now if you're running this for the first time you're going to want to grab your open ai api key and i'm going to show you how to do this with local models a little bit later but first we're going to test out everything using gpt4 so if you don't already have one sign up for open ai get an open ai api key you can click create new key right here name it and then you create a key i've already done that so i'm not going to do that again then come back to the terminal you're going to type export openai underscore api underscore key all capitals equals and then paste your api key in here i'm going to revoke this api key before publishing the video hit enter there now it's saved on your computer then the only thing you need to do next is just type interpreter hit enter. And you can see right here, it says model set to GPT-4 and open interpreter will require approval before running code. All right, first thing, let's ask it what folders are on my desktop. So sure, I can help with that. I'm gonna use the shell command, ls desktop, would you like to run this code? Yes. Here we go, the folders are, and that is correct. And there's also a screenshot. So that is perfect. And it's so cool that you can fully control your computer. And you know what? Look at this image. It's an AVIF image, and I hate that format. Let's convert it to JPEG. Convert the image on my desktop to JPEG. Make sure to remove the .avif file extension after you do. Hit enter. All right, so we'll have to use image magic installed on your machine for the conversion. Here's the plan. Check if image magic is installed. If it's not, install it then convert the image, remove the original .avif image. Let's proceed. Check if image magic is installed on your machine. Execute the code, yes. All right, looks like it is installed. And if it wasn't installed, it would have installed it. Next, we're gonna convert the file to .jpg, yes. And I can see on my desktop, I just created a new file and there it is, .jpg from the .avif file. And it's done. Now it's asking if I wanna remove the other file. And there we go, put it in the trash. And now we have this .jpg file, so easy. Now imagine if you had 500 of these, rather than manually converting each one or having to download some kind of software to do that, you can simply tell the computer to do that. And you can fully control your computer as well. Watch this. So open the folder YouTube on my desktop. Okay, would you like to run this code? Yes. There we go, it opened that folder. Next, open the folder within that folder. Okay, to open the folder within the YouTube directory, I need the exact name of the subfolder. Okay, so it got that folder, perfect. The subfolder within the YouTube directory is named LLM 101. Now let's open it. Go ahead. And there it goes. Perfect. So you can write sophisticated scripts to do pretty much anything on your computer. Next, I also mentioned Open Interpreter now has vision. So to start up Interpreter with vision, we just type interpreter dash dash vision and then hit enter. And there we go. Now I switch over to ChatGPT and I'm going to take a screenshot of this drop down right here. Switching back to Open Interpreter, I'm gonna take that screenshot and drag it on the screen. Then I'm gonna say, create this dropdown with code. So what I'm asking it to do is read what's in the image and write code to recreate it. Okay, so to create a dropdown similar to the one in the screenshot, I'll need to write HTML with inline Tailwind CSS styles. And here we go. So it's writing all the code to do that and it's done. And it says, would you like to run this code? Yes. So it popped open an HTML file and there's the dropdown. It's definitely not perfect, but it's pretty good. Let's try to get it to 
correct itself. Wow, look at this. I was about to give it feedback, but it reviewed its own output. The output you see on your machine indicates that the HTML and Tailwind CSS code has been executed and displayed. It appears that you are seeing a drop down. However, upon reviewing the screenshot you provided, I can see that there's a mismatch between the desired design and the actual output. Unbelievable. And here we go. And now it's writing out all the things it's gonna fix. It gave me updated code, although it's kind of weird. Oh, there we go. There's the updated code. And would you like to run this code? Let's see the next version. And there we go, much better. And now we have a drop down. Let's see what it thinks about that one. All right, task is done. It's still not perfect, but it's really really good. Let me actually try to get rid of this. So simply say that piece of code is showing, remove it. Okay, there, it wrote the code, let's try it out. And unfortunately it's still there. So I'm gonna be done with this for now. Obviously it's it's not perfect, but I'd still say really good. Ah, there it says, and it's correcting itself. It appears that the previous HTML code block still has the erroneous code tag should have been removed. I apologize for the oversight. And now it's writing some more code. Let's see it, if it fixed it this time, it still didn't. So it is struggling to get rid of this little piece of code showing. And it sees once again that it still has that code there. I don't know why it's struggling so much to get rid of it. I can see already it's still going to show it. All right, I'm going to let it do one more try, and then I'm going to move on. All right, yep, still there. Okay, so I'm just going to end it right there. So opening regular interpreter backup, I want to show you how to actually create tools and reuse tools. Let's see if this will work. Okay, convert the screenshot on my desktop to JPEG. Once you're done, save the code necessary to do that so we can reuse the code later. Call it conversion tool. So plan for this task is as follows. Find the screenshot file on the desktop. Use the convert command from image magic. Save the successful command to a shell script called conversion tool.sh for later reuse. Okay, so now it's looking for any PNG files. There it is. So now it's gonna convert it to JPEG and that's gonna use image magic's convert command. So it's seeing if it's installed. Yes, it is. Okay, now it's using the convert command to actually convert the file. Okay, so it failed. It seems the convert command failed to locate the screenshot file. This could be due to the spaces. Let's try again. All right, there we go, it worked. So this is obviously very simple code to run, but you can create very complex tools that you can save and reuse. So now let's confirm that the new JPEG has been created. Yes, okay, so it has. Now it should save the code. Okay, so now it's gonna create the file, yes. All right, it has been successfully created. The script takes two arguments, the source image and a destination JPEG file. So now I can have Open Interpreter reuse that code rather than pinging GPT-4 again to write the code from scratch. Absolutely incredible. Now what if you want to build applications on top of Open Interpreter? It really could not be easier. Let me show you. So down in the bottom right, I have my Conda environment selected. So all I need to do is import interpreter from interpreter, then do interpreter.chat, input a prompt, and that's it. Let's try it out. Now for some reason, the interpreter here could not be imported, but we'll see if it works. Okay, so of course, Python module issues. Let's do this. Pip install Open Interpreter, wherever I am. All right, let's see if that worked. So my Visual Studio code must be in a different environment because it didn't have Open Interpreter and now it doesn't have the API key. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Export, Open AI API key, hit enter. Now it should work. Let's push play again. All right, here we go. Okay, to plot the normalized stock prices of Apple and Meta, we will take the following steps. And there it goes. So now you can imagine you can build entire applications on top of Open Interpreter's power. You can even control the desktop. You can use the vision version of the model. And of course, you can power everything locally, which I'm going to show you in a second. So here we go. It's writing the code to actually do what I just asked it. Yes, go ahead and do it. Let's see if it works. So it's installing some packages. Great, we got the closing prices of Apple and Meta. So it actually wrote code to hit an API. Now it's doing normalization using pandas, JSON. So it is writing code to actually normalize the data. Would you like to run this code? Yes. Okay, there is an issue. Let's see, it appears there was an error in my previous code. So of course it is self-correcting. I tried to apply json.loads to the pandas series object instead of the string. Let's correct this confusion, all right. And that is obviously a really cool part of Open Interpreter is the fact that I can actually self-correct and it's kind of like agents in that sense. Would you like to run this code? Yes, all right, still another issue. Let's see if it corrects itself. And this is the same thing that Code Interpreter from ChatGPT does. It writes code, it tries to execute it. If it has any errors, it tries to fix it. 
Okay, so it looks like I ran into some issues running Interpreter from the code. It keeps saying parent appears to have exited shutting down. Now, I've actually gotten it to work outside of on this video, so I know it works, but I'm struggling to recreate it now. But obviously, you can just run this, test it out yourself, and play around with building code on top of Open Interpreter. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to run this completely locally using LM Studio, one of my favorite projects. It is so easy to use. And I've already created a full tutorial for LM Studio. I'll drop it in the link below. Once you have LM Studio installed, I went ahead and just searched for Mixtral. I download this massive Dolphin 2.7 Mixtral 8x7B model, my favorite model. You go down to this My Models folder, make sure it's there. It is. Great. Okay, so I clicked load and it's loading the model right now. Okay, so it should be loaded, perfect. Now we just click Start Server. Now we have the Dolphin 2.7 Mixtral 8X 7B loaded locally, which is obviously mind blowing in itself, but now we're gonna power Open Interpreter using this open source model. Switch back to Terminal. All we're gonna type is interpreter dash dash local and hit enter. And that's it, it knows to use LM Studio's endpoints. Here we go. Open Interpreter's local mode is powered by LM Studio. You will need to run LM Studio in the background. It tells you how to do it. I've already done that. Of course, this is highly experimental. Don't expect GPT 3.5 or 4 level quality. But of course, this is awesome. So we're going to try it out anyways. Tell me what folders are on my desktop. All right, now my video might slow down quite a bit right now because it is using a ton of my processing power on my computer. And if you're wondering, I have a MacBook Pro M2 Ultra and it might actually be incredibly slow. Maybe I should not have downloaded such a massive model. I think this model's too big for doing everything I'm doing at the same time, including recording these videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and click stop. I'm gonna eject the model and I'm gonna download a small model Mistral. So here we go, Mistral 7B Instruct. This is for code, this is great. And I'm gonna go ahead and download the quantized version right there. So this is a much smaller model, hopefully it's much faster. Okay, now the smaller Mistral 7B model finished. Let's go ahead and load it up, click right here, click there. It's gonna load the model, loading much faster, perfect. Now we're gonna start our server again. Switch back to the terminal. We're gonna do interpreter dash dash local. All right, now tell me what folders I have on my desktop. Now remember, this is running completely locally. And you can see right here, streaming response. So it is working. And here it goes. To solve the problem, we can use Theo's module in Python, which allows us to get information about the operating system and basic actions related to it. Now, again, it's not gonna perform as well as GPT-4, it just won't. But if we fine tune it, if we play around with it, if we test different scenarios, we could get it to work really well. If we were using a larger mixtral model, which we can host somewhere, it would also work very well. So let's execute the code. And there it is, the folders on my desktop. So it actually worked perfectly on the first go using a very small mistral model, mistral 7B, completely locally. So this works, this is incredible. So play around with Open Interpreter, let me know what you think. I've spoken to Killian, who's the original author of Open Interpreter, and he told me about his vision, and his vision aligns extremely well with the way that I see the world. Essentially, there's gonna be a large language model interface for computers, and eventually, we're just gonna talk to this large language model, and there's no need for applications anymore. So it's gonna be really exciting to see this project evolve. Play around with it, let me know what you think. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.